Hello to one and all who is watching this right now. My name is Srijani Bhadri and today we have with us my mentor and somebody who I look up to from a very very young age. Please welcome Mr. Rupesh Kumar who is the head of engineering for WeWork India. Before that he has held lots of influential posts in very very big companies like Big Basket and even Adobe. It's a pleasure to have you with us here sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rajani. And uh, hi, hello to everyone who is watching this. Really excited to be part of this and qu quite happy uh, to, to meet you, Srijani. Thank you so much. So uh, my first question for today will be, could you please share your career journey and what exactly led you to WeWork India? Great. Uh, so... My career journey, I started my career uh, right after the college. I graduated from IIT Kharagpur in 1995, 99. Uh, and after that, I joined a company called MBT, which was in Pune. Uh, it was a services company, and I quickly realized that service, services company is not my forte. Uh, I moved to a company called Pramati Technology, which was one of the first product company from India. We were making a J2E application server at and this was the cutting edge at that time uh, in terms of the tech. And it was a small startup, all folks from uh, top colleges of the country, uh, very young. Uh, so went there, uh, spent uh, four years there. After that, uh, moved to Adobe. Uh, worked, for, worked with Adobe for almost 14 years, worked on multiple uh, developer products, server products, and uh, and e-commerce for Adobe. Uh, for after 14 years, wanted to get into startups, wanted to have some thrill. Uh, so then uh, moved to Big Basket, where I was taking care of uh, everything that is customer facing. Uh, and this was a completely new experience for me, moving from a large enterprise to a small startup. Uh, but it was great fun building a lot of things at a really large scale. Uh, so did that for quite some time. Uh, then I moved to uh, Medibuddy as a head of engineering there. Medibuddy is a health tech company and uh, built uh, quite a lot of things you know, in around one and a half, two years uh, period where uh, I was there. And then after that, I moved to WeWork and WeWork has been, uh, it's, it's a great company uh, and it is, uh, the mission for WeWork is to empower uh, tomorrow, tomorrow's world at work, uh, which, is, which is really an amazing uh, mission. And we are helping uh, from freelancers to large enterprises, everyone, uh, we are helping them come together uh, provide them a really great uh, workspace with everything taken care and uh, enable them to uh, become really productive and give them all the things that they need. Thank you so much. That was really, really an exciting journey. So my next question will be, um, so you have worked in lots of diverse um, enterprises this entire time. And um, in all of these enterprises, apart from the first services company, all of them are tech companies. So my next question for today would be, how has all these, how have all these companies, let's say like WeWork India and Big Basket especially, integrated uh, technology to enhance their services and member experience, especially when it's customer facing? So what is your guidance to improve front end customer facing tech? Well, uh, I, I mean, if you talk about uh, basically Adobe or Big Basket or anybody or WeWork, I think uh, we have we have been seeing technology evolving at an amazing pace, uh, and every year you see uh, it technology uh, taking a major leap every year, and uh, and it it just takes the whole user experience to the next level and. At at every company, we we have been we have made a really really amazing uh, member ex user experience or member experience. Uh, it it's uh, 
I mean, if you talk about Big Basket, uh, the the whole mobile app or or the desktop app, uh, that that's a starting point for every uh, every customer. That's the touch touch point uh, for them to do everything. And uh, what was really important is that how do you create the delight in each and everything, whether it is uh, starting from the login, uh, how do you make the login seamless to discovering the product? And it's a big basket has a huge variety of the products. Uh, how do you enable them to discover uh, the product, search them, get as much information because you're not going to a physical store where someone can help you. So then how do you uh, do that? Then how do you easily uh, check out? How do you create a recommendation engine which can help the users uh, dis uh, un understand what uh, the customer would buy or uh, learn from the user and give, give them personalized uh, offers, give them a, a recommendation based on their purchase history that, okay, these are the things that you would want to add to the cart. Uh, because you are buying this frequently or other people have bought it uh, to uh, basically help them do the self-service. Uh, and now with uh, uh, everyone going to quick commerce, so there are a lot of innovation that went in uh, into the user experience. At, uh, at WeWork, again, we are building a lot of things which are going to create the really delight for users. And now with uh, uh, AI coming where everything uh, is getting impacted with AI, uh, this is going to take another leap into uh, how the user uh, interface is going to be, how the users are going to interact with the application. I can see things moving into uh, voice uh, or, or just voice-based interaction or chat-based interaction more and more with where, uh, you and I can just uh, interact with the um, app uh, like any other human being and get things done. Uh, for example, uh, let's say at Big Basket, you can just say, okay, I, I need I need to cook something for my uh, dinner tonight uh, and I would like to eat something Italian. So suggest me some recipe and suggest me the ingredient and then uh, it will come, all those things will come up and then you just add to the cart and then you check out in two minutes. So, I mean, everything is going to become, uh, I mean, the experience is going to go to the next level. Uh, and that is what uh, will happen in the industry. That's what we are doing at the Big Basket as well. Every touch point is going to, going to become much, much more uh, amazing and simpler for the users. That was really eye-opening. So my next question for today will be um, the flexible workspace industry in India, especially, is kind of an unconventional um, industry because um, because not many people actually, especially in the orthodox working style, people who prefer that kind of working style, not many people exactly are aware of this kind of workspace industry. So how exactly um, does we work address this problem? Well, uh, I think that's a very, very uh, relevant question. And, uh, and that's something that... Uh, WeWork has defined that industry and WeWork has, uh, WeWork started almost uh, 10 years back. And in in this time, WeWork has defined this industry. And now you see uh, a lot of co-working spaces have come up uh, in, in, in the country as well as across the globe. And uh, and WeWork has been at the forefront of spreading the awareness. There, there are a lot of a uh, lot of, uh, you can say, brand campaigns, uh, conferences, uh, and a lot of uh, uh, presents at various events where we uh, talk about this. We uh, And all the people who have been uh, working with us in our workspace, they become the brand ambassador. They love the, our space so much. Uh, the whole uh, vibrancy of the space, whole vibe of the space, the uh, the value that we provide in terms of 
everything uh, right from the workspace to internet to uh, tea and coffee that you get to security to IT uh, and anything that you need in any office workspace. Everything is taken care by us. Uh, the companies or anyone who needs to come to uh, work, they just sign up and they come into the space. They don't have to take care of anything. So that's a huge value add. And whoever uh, has been our members, they really love it. So it's uh, that also spreads. Uh, so I think... be creating this space and uh, getting the mind share uh, from uh, from the users across the country that is actually a very very innovative and i never actually thought of the users themselves becoming the brand ambassador that mindset itself is so so path breaking so my next question will be about covid-19 so it hit us it is trying to hit us still and it might hit us, God forbid. So now um, COVID-19 hit all major startups in India. Either it hit a sixer or it hit a run out. So my question is, how exactly did Big Basket come up with all its ideas, which totally made COVID-19 hit Big Basket in such a form that it pretty much became a sixer? Yeah, I mean, COVID nineteen was uh, COVID was definitely a bummer for for the whole world, and uh, and everyone was badly impacted. And uh, at at Big Basket, we uh, we were in a really difficult spot uh, in in the sense that across the country it was a complete lockdown. People were not able to get out of their home, and everyone needed their uh, daily supplies and. Uh, at Big Basket, us, we were struggling ourselves because a lot of our uh, our uh, uh, warehouse uh, staff had uh, gone back to their towns or villages, etc. So we were really struggling on that. Uh, now we had to really innovate at a massive pace to ensure that people uh, get their supplies, get their daily needs, with uh, and a lot of innovations happened uh, during that time at uh, at at big basket uh, and i can talk about some of the innovations that we did uh, for example we uh, started doing uh, community uh, delivery where we will uh, have some point of contact in the community who will collect the orders we will do the bulk delivery and then uh, distribute in the society or in the locality uh, we came up with a slotted delivery. Uh, I mean, in the sense, you can do a slot reservation. Uh, people were not getting slot. That was a massive problem. Everyone needed it. And since we were really short-staffed, uh, we uh, what we did was that we allowed people to book a, a slot or pick a slot in advance. And then we would notify the user that your slot has come. Now you can go ahead and place. So we had to really... Uh, ration it so that everyone gets the gets their need uh, we uh, also uh, reduced our uh, number of skus i mean during this time nobody needs 30000 sku people need the essentials so we really cut down so that we reduce the time that is taken by the picker to pick it pack it and deliver it uh, and lots and lots of uh, innovative ideas came during that time so that we can give the supplies uh, to maximum number of people uh, across the country. Yeah, definitely. And I remember being that one person in the community delivery and collecting everything and distributing it. That's a major yeah. part of my childhood now. So <laughs> um, my next question is that um, the idea of the, in several cases still in the more more orthodox companies of India and the world, technology and business goals are seen as two entirely conflicting ideas because they think tech is too expensive and business goals are too economic, I guess. And um, 
uh, even in lots of ventures which were started by my classmates, this was a major problem. How to fit tech in business? So yeah, this is my question to you. What exactly is your guidance in a situation like this? So uh, I, I I don't think that they are at orthogonal to each other. In fact, uh, tech plays a very, very uh, key role uh, for the business. And in today's world, technology is uh, the key driver for almost every business. It, uh, it is an enabler for every business. Uh, and technology is what will uh, take any business to the next next level. Uh, I mean, if you look at uh, from the customer perspective, uh, it it really creates that delight and if every uh, touch point where uh, technology can make that, uh, create that delight for the customers. In every aspect of the business, uh, now uh, data is the key. Every, if, I mean, every part of the business needs decision-making and there is a lot of data that is coming out. How do you use technology to make the right decision-making for the business? How do you make every decision as a data-driven uh, instead of just going by the gut feel or uh, or some conventional way? Uh, data gives you a lot of insights by which you can make some intervention, whether it is uh, marketing, whether it is sales, whether it is the operations, whether it is finance. Every aspect of the business uh, needs that uh, insights, uh, needs those uh, uh, systems which can help to make the right decisions uh, and then a, a lot of it all uh, I mean all all these aspects of the business all uh, also uh, can become a lot more efficient by using the technology uh, and technology can uh, reduce a lot of manual work a lot of grunt work where you people spend uh, days and months, days, weeks, or months can be done in just minutes or seconds. Uh, and technology is evolving at a, such a massive pace that uh, think, things can be done in a lot more efficient way. Uh, I mean, just look at uh, chat GPT. I mean, the kind of information that people used to, uh, I mean, people used to take months to uh, come up with something or understand something, ChatGPT can give you that in a few seconds. Uh, if you look at all the uh, different uh, tools that generates image or videos, the, uh, the creative people used to take weeks or months to create those. Now with uh, all the AI tools, you can generate that when in few minutes or a few hours. So the efficiency is becoming uh, super high with with the use of technology and this is not going to uh, stop uh, and this is actually aiding uh, everyone uh, across the organization uh, across uh, in uh, every business uh, to uh, to become really really uh, efficient and make the business uh, much more profitable thank you so much i think that will really be an eye opener for my classmates who are going to be watching this in the future sometime. So my last question for today is that, what advice would you give to aspiring engineers who want to make a mark in the tech and engineering industry like you have in the future? Well, uh, as, as I said, uh, technology is uh, everything today uh, and uh, it is it's really, really essential for uh, for this generation uh, to be very, very uh, comfortable with it, uh, completely up to date with it, and uh, continue learning. Uh, I mean, I would always advise uh, the young engineers to be curious uh, all the time. Uh, it's really important. Uh, to understand what what is happening, why is it happening, and how is it happening, and uh, as as an engineer, uh, we engineer solutions, and uh, and 
unless you have that curiosity, uh, we cannot innovate or build new things. So that's something which is uh, really, really key. Uh, keep an eye uh, uh, keep an eye on the world that what all is happening in the world, uh, who is doing what and and once you see uh, the problems, you will uh, you will come up with the solutions. you can build on on that. If you see what others are solving, you can build on top of that and that's how, we are going to evolve. A lot of people talk about that AI is going to take away jobs. AI is going to uh, reduce the workforce and you will not need work. I don't believe that at all. Uh, I think we are in the next phase of human evol evolution. And, uh, and that how we evolve is in the hands of this, this generation and uh, how they will take us uh, to the... Uh, to the next decade, next uh, next century. Thank you so much, sir. Your words were extremely valuable to me and to all of my classmates and peers who will be watching this. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you with us today. It was a very insightful in interview. Thank you so much. Thank you, Srijani. And I, I had real fun uh, talking to you. So thank you so much. And I'm, I'm uh, really impressed with the kind of uh, insights that you also have about, about the world and the in industry in general. So really, really nice uh, having this conversation. Thanks. So